Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the corner of Valley View and Russell where we're going to the Whiskey Stadium. It's my first time here and I'm super happy to have you along. Let's head inside. Alright everyone, here we are seated at the Whiskey Stadium. The Super Bowl is making its debut here in Las Vegas this coming Saturday and so I thought this was the perfect venue to show off this week. While the Whiskey Bar and Grill has a handful of locations here in Las Vegas, the biggest one and the most impressive is here right at the stadium. Now I've never actually eaten at one of these before, but I'm super excited to check it out. Let's see what they have on offer starting with the drinks. And here is your drink menu of whiskeys. You can tell by the name they're going to have a lot of whiskey and bourbon. Feel free to take a pause in the video if you'd like to take a look for your favorite drink. Lots of whiskeys, bourbons, and scotches here. Let's flip over the drink menu. We have cocktails and wines. Cocktails for about 13 bucks. Wine for about nine to ten dollars a glass. And then here are your beers. All looking really good. Pretty solid looking drink menu here at Whiskey. Now let's take a look at what they have to eat. And here is the menu at Whiskey's Bar Bites to start. You have uh, a bunch of loaded fries, nachos, empanadas. Oh, this is all looking really great. Gotta have really good bar bites if you're gonna be a bar and grill here in Las Vegas. Here are the sandwiches and burgers. This all looks really good as well. Ooh, a chopped cheese, that sounds good. Here are some salads and bowls as well as some pizza options. And then your entrees, as well as some sweets down here. I gotta say, this is a pretty good looking menu here at Whiskey. A lot of varied options, and I'm excited to try them out, because you know how it goes in my videos. Every restaurant is a buffet if you're willing to pay. So I'm gonna get a nice variety, and together we'll see what this restaurant's all about. Appetizer are coming up first. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back my friends, now our first round of appetizers just got here and this is looking really good, let me give you a view. We got the bulgogi kimchi fries as well as their salt and pepper riblets, an order of their chorizo empanadas as well as their whiskey poppers. This is all looking so good, can't wait to give them a try. First appetizer I'm trying today are the riblets. These are salt and pepper riblets served alongside a, a very good looking sauce, however I want to try them straight up first. Let's see how these are. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's really good. A beautifully crispy, flaky skin here. While I wouldn't call it ultra crunchy, it's actually the perfect texture for these ribs. The meat inside is tender and very moist. It's a good pork. Look at how cleanly it comes off the bone. The meat is super tender. The seasoning for this pork is phenomenal. They went with an Asian-inspired spice blend. You get a lot of five spice, really giving an aromatic note to this rib. It's very enjoyable. A much simpler seasoning blend in the batter, I want to say it's just straightforward salt and pepper. It's just enough flavor so that the exterior isn't bland, but allows the pork inside to really shine. So far so good, I'm a huge fan of these little riblets. Let's go ahead and dip it into this sauce. Kind of has a bit of a soy color to it. Let's give it a try with the sauce. Oh yeah, that sauce is very good. A beautiful blend of sweet and savory here. It's a great accompaniment for these ribs. Lots of garlic, as well as just a hint of spice as well. It's a very complex and deep sauce. I really like this. I wouldn't say it's overly sweet. It's a much more natural sweetness, almost kind of akin to honey. Slightly viscous, a little more like a glaze than just a standard sauce. The way it coats these ribs is really magical and honestly comes together very well. I'm a huge fan of these salt and pepper ribs. Next up, I'm trying the Whiskey Poppers. This is the Whiskey Bar and Grill's take on jalapeno poppers. Definitely one of my favorite snacks. Let's see how it is. Oh yeah, that's good. A beautiful crisp to the exterior of these jalapeno poppers. Excellent fry job. While the exterior does have a great crisp, I can't necessarily say I taste it too much, but I think that's fine because the other flavors here are really robust. The jalapeno inside is really nice here. It provides just the right amount of heat without actually blazing your mouth. 
The cream cheese here is ultra smooth, and it comes in the middle of the bite before that heat gets too overwhelming. There's something similar to like a maple bacon jam that's giving a salty sweetness here, which is what's bringing these jalapeno poppers into the next level. There is a spicy mayo applied here. I don't know if that's particularly necessary because you already get creaminess and richness from the cream cheese. And I don't think the spice levels necessarily need to be aided by the sauce as well. But I don't have any serious complaints. This is really tasty. Next up, we're trying the chorizo empanadas. These feel super crispy in my hands, and they have a great color to them as well. Let's see how they taste. Mm. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. Absolutely love the empanada skin here. It's crispy, it's flaky, but it's not overly greasy. That I appreciate. This chorizo filling is incredibly flavorful. Such a savory, smoky flavor with that chorizo pork. It's very satisfying. There's a little bit of potato in here providing some body, which is providing a very nice mouthfeel. One of the most delicious things about this particular empanada is the use of curry spices in this mixture. It provides such a deep aromatic flavor. There are some raisins in here providing sweetness, and I will say that was a little bit of a curveball for me, but the more I'm tasting it, I do appreciate that extra vector of flavor in the chorizo empanada. Try tipping it into some of the accompanying sauce here. And we give it a try. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a very good sauce. A really good cilantro lime crema here. It certainly pairs well with the chorizo empanadas. It's cooling and creamy, as well as a nice freshness coming from that lime and cilantro. It does provide some breakup with the smoky flavors from that chorizo. Honestly, it's good. No serious complaints with this dish. And the last bite of food from this particular round is gonna be the bulgogi and kimchi french fries. This is a huge bowl just absolutely loaded with french fries, kimchi, and bulgogi here. Being Korean, I'm pretty curious about this dish. I wanna try the bulgogi on its own first. And let's see how it tastes. Mm. You know, yeah, that's actually a really great bulgogi there. You know, typically bulgogi is much thinner cuts of meat than this, but I actually appreciate how much more satisfying the bites are with these big chunks of beef. They definitely hit that bulgogi marinade well. Really nice levels of garlic, as well as umami from the soy sauce, and just the perfect amount of sesame oil providing some nuttiness. Good salt levels as well, not bland by any means. The bulgogi part of the equation definitely checks out. Try the kimchi up next. I mean, this looks the part. Let's see if it plays the part. Oh yeah, the kimchi's great. A nice crunch to that cabbage. No real complaints when it comes to the texture. A good level of spiciness here. There's definitely some heat, but it's been fermented perfectly. There's such a wonderful tang to this kimchi. The kimchi has a good level of seasoning as well. I seriously don't have any complaints. This is good kimchi. Now we're gonna go ahead and put all the elements together. These are the kimchi and bulgogi fries here at the Whiskey. Okay, wow, that bite was delicious. Now, bulgogi and kimchi have been married together for a hundred years or more, so you already know it pairs well. Sweet, savory meat coming together with tangy, spicy kimchi. A match made in heaven in my book. The french fries are actually working really well here. They have a little bit of a potato starch coating, giving additional crispiness. The texture is actually holding up very well to this bulgogi and the kimchi. You don't actually get too much of that potato flavor until the very end of the bite, and it's a very nice flavor to go out on. There's also a spicy mayo that's been applied here, providing a bit of a richness to the bite. And what I love about this particular spicy mayo is that it's a gochukaru mayo. It's a Korean dried chili flake that's providing a really nice heat. This is a very delicious dish. I'm a huge fan of this one. And there you have it, folks. The first round of appetizers I want to try today. Honestly, there were so many items on that bar menu that I wanted to taste. I think I'm going to do a little bit more before we hit up the handhelds. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now our second round of appetizers are here and this is looking so good. Let me give you a view. I got their corn dog fondue as well as some tuna poke nachos and their after school special French bread pizza. Super excited to try these out. Let's go in. First up, I want to try their after school special French bread pizza. When I was a kid, I used to play at this little arcade in California called Video 94 and in the same plaza was a little pizza shop that used to sell French bread pizzas for a dollar for after school. The number of French bread pizzas I must have consumed at that place is somewhere between one and three trillion. And this is bringing back a lot of nostalgia for me. Let's see how it is here at Whiskey. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's fine. 
If you watch the channel enough, you know that I always think that nostalgia is the strongest spice, and it's definitely doing work for me here. I can't necessarily say that there's anything super special about this particular French bread pizza, but all of the standard elements here are done well. You've got a very flaky, crusty French bread loaf here, very toasty on the bottom, giving a nice texture to the bite. A very straightforward pizza sauce here. I wouldn't be surprised if this was only a handful of ingredients. A nice mild sweetness from the tomato sauce, good garlic levels as well. It is a tad sweet, but the salty pepperonis here help counterbalance that. A really nice melty cheese on this French bread pizza. It gives a ton of richness to the bite. I'm not gonna say that this is anything crazy unique or special, but it really brings back a lot of memories for me. I like French bread pizza. Next up, we're trying the mini corn dogs. These are served alongside two sauces, I believe a honey mustard as well as some kind of cheese fondue. I'm gonna try it straight up first. You know what, that's fine. A nice fry job here on the exterior. Very crispy, though I will say it's a tad greasy. There is a nice corn flavor to this exterior, and it's pervasive throughout the entire bite. A little bit of that natural sweetness. It is quite good. The sausage inside is okay. It leans sweet, which is not particularly my favorite route but it is nice and meaty and serves the function for this corn dog. Of the two sauces, I'd say the honey mustard is pretty straightforward here, providing just a little bite as well as the smooth natural sweetness of the honey. I'm a little more interested in finding out what this cheese fondue sauce is like. Let's see how this tastes. Yeah, that's pretty good. A creamy and rich cheese fondue sauce here. It does add a nice dimension to the bite. It's a bit of a spicy cheese sauce, maybe some jalapeno in there, and the heat actually works very well in general. I think with the cheese sauce, the overall bite does lean pretty salty, but they are quite fun to snack on. Honestly, no serious complaints with these corn dogs. All right, everyone, now the last appetizer I'm trying today is the poke nachos. These are tuna poke nachos with a lot going on here, and it looks pretty good. Let's see how it tastes. You know what, not bad. I do really like the wonton chips here. Super crispy while maintaining an airy center. That's actually one of the things I love most about wonton chips. I think the tuna here is just okay. I wanna say the flavors on the fish are a little muted. You don't really get that robust tuna flavor that you're looking for. The tuna flavor can definitely be a little bit more concentrated here. And I'd pull back on that sesame oil. It's a bit overpowering for how mild the tuna flavor is. There's some pickled onions here, although they're not really providing a ton of flavor like I'm used to from a pickled onion. The bite and tang that you're expecting is present, just very dim. I will say there's a nice richness coming from the avocado, but in general, the overall bite leans very spicy from the jalapenos here. Maybe that's actually why a lot of the other flavors feel so muted because the spice is pretty overwhelming. It's definitively the dominating flavor profile. Now these are listed as screaming o poke nacho, so maybe they're definitely going for that spicy route. But personally, I think the tuna could use a little bit of amping up so that the flavors can stand up to a lot of that spice. I kind of know the recipe they're going for, and this isn't the best execution I've had of it, but it's not terrible. All right, my friends, now that's all of the appetizers I'm trying for today. My friend and I are gonna continue working on this, and then we're gonna get our first round of handhelds. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, now our handhelds are here and this is looking so good, let me give you a view. We got a Brooklyn style chopped cheese as well as some cheeseburger sliders. I got a shrimp po' boy and their chicken sandwich. Really excited to try these out, let's go in. First sandwich I'm trying today is the Brooklyn chopped cheese. I'm actually joined by a buddy of mine who's from New York and he's saying this is pretty spot on so I'm looking forward to this, let's give it a try. Oh my god, this is delicious. I genuinely don't even know where to begin. This is such a flavorful sandwich. A perfectly soft hoagie roll here, a soft crust, a soft airy center. It's holding the sandwich together perfectly. I feel like the chopped cheese is just the perfect evolution of a hamburger. All the flavors here are so great. Very flavorful seasoned beef here. It's meaty, it's savory, bringing a lot of satisfaction to the bite. The peppers and jardinera here are providing a really beautiful heat and sweetness. It is such a treat in this sandwich. Every bite is rich. That's what I love the most here. A perfectly even distribution of toppings and sauce makes for the perfect bite every bite. There's a little bit of a sweet tang coming from the sauce. Not exactly like a thousand island, but leaning toward it. There's a nice richness coming from the cheese and a little bit of natural sweetness coming from the tomato here. It's rich, it's savory, 
with a nice complex flavor between the sweetness of the peppers as well as the savoriness of that beef. This is a truly terrific sandwich. I'm in love with this one. Okie doke, next up we're trying the shrimp po' boy. These sandwiches are absolutely massive. I have to cut these down for size. A beautiful purple slaw here and some really crispy looking shrimp. Let's see how this is. Wow, that's actually quite flavorful. No real issues with the sandwich bread here at Whiskey's. My hat is certainly going off to the baker. They've got some good stuff. The shrimp here in this po' boy is incredibly succulent and plump. You can actually just see how much of this bite is being filled up with shrimp. Not like a lot of places where you get very little shrimp and a ton of breading. Speaking of the breading, it's actually very crunchy. A good crispy texture there. There's a little bit of a smoky element coming from what I want to say is some Cajun inspired seasoning, maybe some paprika. But oddly enough, there's actually a very sweet element to the shrimp. I almost want to say that there's some kind of a sweet coconut flavor there. Maybe coconut inspired, just some kind of a sweetness I'm not able to completely identify. The purple slaw here is very nice. Super crunchy, very fresh there. It's very lightly dressed. It's not super overwhelming, that I appreciate. And there's a sweet tang coming from that dressing, a nice amount of sugar and vinegar there. Along with the natural flavors of the tomato, it actually brings a nice sweet element to the overall sandwich. And in combination with that succulent shrimp, it does come together very well. This is a good sandwich. Moving things along, this is the cheeseburger slider. Solid looking double patty slider here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's fine. A nice soft slider bun here. It's been toasted in the middle and it's acting as a solid vessel for the slider. A little bit sweet in flavor. The bun is doing its job here. A good cook to the burger meats. They have a bit of a smashed exterior. You certainly get that enhanced flavor coming from the Maillard reaction and along with some solid seasonings, the meat here is good. Caramelized onions in the sliders are providing a bit of a natural nutty sweetness, and I don't have too many complaints when it comes to the lettuce and the tomatoes. A pretty straightforward burger sauce here, a little tangy, very similar to a Thousand Island. You know, this is a pretty straightforward, solid tasting cheeseburger, no real complaints. And the last handheld to try today is the whiskey chicken sandwich. Again, these sandwiches are absolutely massive, so I'm just slicing off a nice little portion here, which does give me a preview of the chicken inside. I'm not gonna say this looks ultra juicy, but looks can certainly be deceiving. Let's see how this is. Hmm. Yeah, you know what, not bad. I'll just say this is probably the least impressive of the four handhelds I tried today, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad sandwich. I'm still in love with the bread here at Whiskey. I seriously don't have any complaints about it. The tomato and lettuce here are fine, as it's been throughout all of the other dishes here. They're doing good work picking the produce. Unfortunately, looks weren't all that deceiving this time around. The chicken was a tad dry, and anyone who's grilled chicken knows it really only takes a minute for it to dry out. So while it's not completely devoid of moisture, I certainly would appreciate a juicier chicken. That said, the chicken is very well seasoned. You've got a blackened seasoning here, providing a little bit of smokiness. Although I wouldn't say those flavors are prevailing very long during the bite. You do get a nice little bit of richness from the Munster cheese here, but I'd say the majority of the flavors actually come from this aioli sauce. It's kind of that honey mustard that we tried earlier with the corn dogs. It provides a little bit of sweetness and bite, as well as some creamy richness to the overall sandwich. I think just a little bit of a juicier chicken here, and maybe just a little bit of additional seasoning will really make that chicken a lot bolder. And then I think I could appreciate the sandwich a little more, but in its current form, I wouldn't say it's all that bad. And the last bite to try from these handhelds are gonna be the french fries. Really good looking french fries here. You can see the herbs and spices on it. Hopefully this is good, let's give it a try. Yes, very, very good french fries here. A wonderfully crispy exterior. I love the addition of potato starch on the outside, giving additional crunch. It's a really good technique when it comes to fries. Very well seasoned, not bland by any stretch of the imagination here. These fries are incredibly flavorful. Bit of a smoky seasoning blend, definitely coming from some paprika, but you also get nice hits of garlic in these fries as well. A good potato flavor is also present in the middle of these french fries. In general, I don't have any serious complaints. I like the fries quite a bit. And that's all of the handhelds I'm trying today. Now my friend and I are getting a bit full here, so I think just a couple bites and we're gonna box it all up because we have one more round of entrees coming. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now our last round of food is here. Let me go and give you a view of the entrees. We got the bourbon chicken as well as their steak frites and an order of their whiskey salmon. This is all looking really great. Let's give it a try. 
First bite I'm trying is gonna be the salmon. It looks like it has that honey mustard sauce on the top, and it does look relatively juicy in the center. Really good looking salmon here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's actually quite tasty. A beautifully cooked salmon here, moist and flaky in the center, but the flesh is still firm. Crispy skin on the top is providing a nice texture. My hat's off to the chef when it comes to the cook. The salmon is well seasoned. You do get a nice flavor of the fish, but the primary flavor profile is coming from that honey mustard sauce. Now I've seen this honey mustard sauce on a handful of dishes, but I think it actually works the best here with the salmon. That light sweetness coming from the honey, as well as a little bit of bite coming from the mustard, plays very, very nicely with the fish here. I wouldn't say this is an ultra unique dish, but it is a very well-prepared salmon. I'm a fan. Now the salmon is served on top of some rice. I'm gonna go in and give this a shot as well. Oh, you know what, that's fine. The rice is well cooked here. It's not gummy or sticky and soft, not too firm. It's a good cook on the rice. That said, I can't say there's a ton going on here in terms of flavor, which is a bit surprising because I think the color would indicate that there's some kind of seasoning here. It's mostly just soaked up a little bit of the juices from the salmon. Though I'm not gonna really complain about that, it is good. This is a pretty plain side when it comes to the dish. Despite its color, it just kind of tastes like white rice. Next up, we're trying the bourbon chicken. Beautiful grill marks to this chicken, and unlike that sandwich, it actually does look quite juicy. Let's see how this is. Mm. Oh yeah, that's great chicken. This is about as perfectly cooked a grilled chicken can be. Nice char on the outside, and incredibly moist and tender on the inside. Wonderfully seasoned chicken here as well. It's a simple seasoning, but generous. The natural flavors of the chicken are really on display here. The chicken aside, I'm actually in love with this bourbon sauce. It has a bit of a nutty sweetness that's coming from that bourbon, as well as just a hint of umami and savoriness. It enhances the flavor of this chicken so well. A really moist, perfectly cooked chicken along with a really nice smoky sauce. This is very tasty, I like it a lot. All right, my friends, now the last bite I'm trying today is of the steak frites. There's an incredible smell coming off of this. Super excited for this one. Let's see how it tastes. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. We asked for the steak cooked medium, and I'd say it's a little closer to medium well, but I wouldn't say it detracts from the overall quality. It's still a fairly juicy steak. Very tender meat here. While I wouldn't mind slightly less of a cook, I don't really have any serious complaints with it. The red chimichurri that they've dressed the steak up with is incredibly flavorful. It's very fresh and smoky in flavor. It's a beautiful accompaniment. You really do get some nice parsley onion hits in that chimichurri. It adds a very nice dimension to the steak. Honestly, not bad at all. I think if they would have hit that medium cook, this would have been spectacular. All right, everyone, now that does it for all of the food today. My friend and I are completely stuffed. I think we're gonna get some boxes for this and then we'll do a little bit of dessert next. Don't go anywhere, cause sweets are coming up. Welcome back everyone, now we have our dessert here and this is looking really good, let me give you a view. We got the Southern Strawberry Shorty, basically their strawberry shortcake. I've got a nice spoonful here with all of the elements on board. Let's see how it is. Hmm. Yeah, you know what, that's pretty good. Absolutely love the flavor of the strawberries here. You get a very nice natural sweetness. There is a bit of a sour tang coming from the strawberries as well. Now the sugar biscuit here is interesting. It's a little bit harder than I was originally expecting. Typically with the strawberry shortcake, I'm used to a very soft biscuit. This particular biscuit has a much crispier exterior and a bit of a buttery dense center. You really do get the buttermilk in that biscuit though. That I appreciate a lot. It holds up very well to the sweet flavors of the strawberries. The Bavarian cream here is incredibly smooth and ultra sweet. It's a little bit eggy, very rich, and its flavor is much more subtle in comparison to those strawberries. The Bavarian cream is quite enjoyable. Now this may be a preference, but I think if that biscuit was slightly softer and just a tad more sweet, overall I think this would be a very good dessert. All right, my friends, now that does it for my dinner here at the Whiskey Stadium. Dinner for me and my friend came out to just under $300 today before tip, and we certainly enjoyed our meal. The bulgogi and kimchi fries were absolutely my favorite appetizer of the day. I can see myself coming back for just that dish alone. I loved the whiskey chopped cheese. Not only did I get confirmation from my New York buddy who says it's pretty authentic, but the flavors were really rich and very delicious. I was a big fan of that sandwich. 
I actually really like the bourbon chicken today. The chicken was super well cooked and the nutty sweet flavors of that bourbon sauce are very enjoyable. I wouldn't say I particularly disliked any dish today. I thought they really had their merits. And just a couple of tweaks and better execution on a handful of the dishes and I thought everything would have just been spectacular. I also want to give a big shout out to Summer, our server. Our service was fantastic today. Really, we weren't left wanting for anything. It was great. Now that does it for this video, my friends. I hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. I think if you're visiting Allegiant Stadium or you're anywhere in the area, this is definitely a spot that's worth hitting up. Now, with the Super Bowl coming this weekend, I'm going to show off one other restaurant this coming Saturday before the game. So I hope to see you back here for that restaurant vlog. And that's all for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed Vegas with me. Shin. Bye.